Okay, what's going on everyone? My name is Adam McInnes, hit songwriter and producer, and I've been asked by a lot of requests for me to check out Exosong Tempo. So that's what we'll be covering today in today's song breakdown. If you like these video breakdowns, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, so that way you can be notified of all the new video content I'll be uploading onto this channel. That being said, let's get into it. All right, so a lot of times when I'm doing these breakdowns, I'm doing a mixture of watching the video, but I'm also breaking down the musical production and songwriting and lyrics. Now, this song is in a language that I'm not fluent in, or nor do I speak, but all music revolves around melodic structure and syncopation that are happening underneath the lyrical establishment. So let me break this stuff down for anyone out there who's a singer or producer, and you wanna learn more about how hit songs are created, especially when they're going worldwide. Um, so we're gonna do that in this song. Wow. Okay, I see now why people wanted me to break this down because this is very intricate layering of a mixture of things that I call ear candy and ear worms. So ear candy is when something is super hooky, but you don't have to hear it over and over again. If you did, you might get kind of sick of it because it's just so catchy. Earworms are things that once they get into you, you can kind of keep hearing them over and over again because they're they're satiating in a certain way. So let's break down what they did. Right when it comes in, they start with the synths, the high vocal, grabs attention, great. But then they start adding elements like doom, 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 doom. They start adding the low end, which creates this almost acapella feeling. They start adding the snaps, which creates more tension building up to something. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you will see that I talk about a thing called sonic information. So basically, if I have three instruments and I wanna build tension to the next section, like I wanna build tension from the verse into the chorus, I'm gonna add sonic information so that way the mind of the listener starts to hear more things, meaning more tracks. The more tracks we start to add, it starts to build actually tension in your body. And then we usually release that tension by adding uh, a dropout moment or maybe even a bigger moment could be a big chorus. So, so far they're grabbing attention, they're adding interesting, very interesting elements, even these interesting runs and stuff that are happening. And we're just in the first 19 seconds of the song. So once again, they've really grabbed attention and are saying through the music, pay attention because this is going to be an interesting ride. Uh, so let's keep seeing what they're doing. Perfect. So perfect example. I didn't, I didn't know exactly what they were going to do, but I saw they went from this build up and they dropped into dun, 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 which is a whole different vibe. So it brings tension and then the release. Okay, cool. So if anyone watched in my previous videos, I talk about one of the things that I, that I guess I created in teaching people music, which is called the power of three. A power of three is whenever a melodic section is repeated more than once. It's the way of helping the listener hear a song for the first time, but still remember things. And if you can put the hook in there, I mean the title of the song inside that power of three, it creates an amazing combustion of rememberable moments. So if you notice, it's going, don't end up my tempo, don't end, don't end, leave one, don't end, don't end, don't end, don't end, don't end, don't end, two, don't end, don't end, don't end, don't end, three, don't mess up my tempo. So let's listen again, because it's my first time I've ever hearing this song. I want to make sure I got it right. But that's usually what's happening when you're trying to create a song that the, the mass amount of people can listen to and remember on their first listening session. Oh, also really good to note, uh, if you've watched my other videos, I always talk about transitional elements. And you'll see as the song goes from the one section, meaning the intro, into this next section, you hear the drum starts to go pop, pop, pop. That's its way of signaling. That's the way the producers are signaling to the listener. Something is about to happen. So pay attention. We're going to change 
now. And that goes into the, don't end up my tempo. So listen one more time. Two. Same melody. And bring it again. This is wild. Wow. Okay, so I could see why people wanted me to break this song down. Um, okay, first and foremost, they went from one section again, and now they're changing another time with that low octave voice. We use that low octave voice. It's created in a plugin called Alter Boy. That's the, the most used plugin that people on the market uh, work with when they're trying to drop, drop these uh, vocals for chopped and screwed effects. A lot of people use Alter Boy, but you can also just um, take whatever the the actual vocal is and just drop it down uh, and transpose it an octave lower and it'll create that sound. So once again, every eight bar section is changing. This is a trick used by hit songwriters in order to create, once again, engagement and captivation from the listener. If they kept doing the same melodic structure and the same lyrical ideas and the same things for longer than eight bars, most people would get kind of bored, especially in today's world where everything is very instant, you know? So that's what they're doing. They're giving you a taste of this and then a taste of something completely different and then a taste of something completely different. So that way the whole time you are going along a roller coaster. And we're only 45 seconds in, so I'm sure this song is gonna keep on getting more interesting and hence why people requested it. But once again, uh, they're dropping into this low octave, which is pretty cool. And let's see what else they do next. <laughs> Now what's interesting is they do that Michael Jackson I'm not going to do it because that note's pretty high <laughs> But they do it um, And that's also to grab the ear To say, here's a new moment What's that bass line? Mm -hmm. wow. So it's interesting because I uh, reviewed the song um, Don't Fight the Feeling and I mentioned how it had a Jackson-ish vibe, how it reminded me of like Jackson 5. Obviously, whoever is the producer or whoever is uh, helping with the music or if it's the, the guys from the group, there is an element of them uh, paying homage to the Jacksons or Michael Jackson. You can hear it in the baseline groove. You can hear it in the dancing. You can hear it in the high woos, like all that stuff. So you can see it's prevalent in here, which makes it really interesting. And there's something that's powerful about the music that came out of that era. It just makes people move. It makes people feel something. And so I can see why it still carries on throughout the decades because you, when something has that feeling, you, you can't fight it. So get it? Don't fight the feeling. But I didn't mean to do that, but that, that's what's happening. Listen to the bass line. And so when we're talking about the power of three, it doesn't just happen in the melodic structure of the lyric and melody in the vocals. It also, if played smart and really well, is happening in the bass lines as well. So listen to this bass line, how it's going to do the power of three. Okay, so if you listen really carefully, they're doing exactly what I'm talking about. They're going doom 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 doom. Doom, 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 two. Doom, 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 doom. And on the fourth one, they're changing it. It's like doom, 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 doom. Those little details, most people are not hearing, especially like average consumers, meaning listeners of music who are not studying music. You know, you just listen to music throughout your day, you're at the club, you're in your car. You're not dissecting these layers. But in the eyes of a producer, each instrument is a track. It's a waveform of information. More importantly, what is that information doing and what's it telling the listener? So when they're doing this bass line, it's like doom 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 three times in a row, then doom 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 doom. So changing the fourth one. 
도시나 사이의 케미 이미 나와 놓은 무가 창피해 마부 어정쩡 어버버 할 필요 없다 거미 나 챙길 건 없어 니 손잡아 말래니 가는 게 맞아 왜 카페 돌로 내인걸 백걸음이 남달라 지금 이 속도 맞춰보자 템포 Baby girl Okay I'm gonna break this down so Really interesting melody because it's it's kind of walking down a scale which makes the ear want to follow it But if you're listening really carefully, they're also doing two things interesting. They're doing background vocals going ah, ah, Which is building tension and listen to the kick and the snare. It's starting to rev up more energy Which is probably going to signify a part that's going to come right afterwards. So let's check it out So the kick drum is going boom 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 So before it was in a groove, but when it went to the next section along his vocals went ha, 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 When it did all those movements, it's creating this body of energetic vibration That's going to lead us into the next moment so Okay, cool. So I'm finding the structure now. Now listen when it goes, baby girl. When it goes to that section, you're going to hear that once again, power of three. So check it out. Baby girl, There it is. So let's break it down. It went, you know, baby girl. So that's the melody. The melody is da da ba da 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 So they do it three times once again. Hopefully for anyone who's watching this, you're really starting to sink in, especially if you watched any of my previous videos because there is a science to creating uh, great songs, but most people don't know it and most people can't teach it. I just happen to be a person who, the way my brain works is it sees patterns in everything, almost like I see a matrix in everything. So you can show me a, a different language, you can show me a martial art, you can show me music, you can show me whatever you want, and my brain kind of goes Toosh! and then it shows me all the connecting patterns. Uh, it's been like that since I'm a kid, so I'm able to decipher these highly, you know, coded algorithms, but do it in kind of like instantly. So hopefully you're getting some information on this and you're seeing now the patterns that, that I see um, when I'm listening to music. Let's keep listening. <laughs> All right, cool. Now notice how when they go into this next chorus, which is don't mess up my tempo, they do the same exact double kick drum beat to let the listener know a new section is coming in. So it goes pop, 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 pop. So listen one more time. They must do massive amounts of choreography practice. See, and now they're bringing back the bass line. The drum beat, you see it now. Oh, that's cool. How many guys are in this group? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? I thought the last video had four. This is the harmonies going on, the moving harmonies. Another time, the back beat. That's a cool piano. These set designs are crazy. Okay, and so one thing to note is they're repeating the title again, just like I said from the last song. The repetition of the title now allows the listener to walk away from hearing the song only one time. And if someone said, well, what's the name of the song? You could be like, oh, don't mess up my tempo or tempo or something to do with tempo. Your brain will start to kind of 
walk back, oh yeah, I remember them saying that similar word over and over again. So if you go to Google, if you go to Shazam, you can find the song if you were to research it very quickly. These guys, it sounds like they can do everything. <laughs> this guy's playing piano. Let me make sure he's, I want to make sure he's actually playing that part. Yeah, that looks like he's playing that part from looking at his hand and the timing on it. So that means he's probably a classically trained piano player. Uh, it seems like everyone in this group can sing really good. They can all rap really good, uh, which is very rare to have all of these elements in one group. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Okay, let me keep watching. And they can dance too, which is wild. I want a Rubik's Cube like that. I want a clear Rubik's Cube. That way you can, you're always winning. It's ah. a cool cue, okay. There's gotta be some symbolism in that. Now check this out. This piano part that goes that piano part coming down is another transitional element that's leading everyone into this ending part. Um, so Usually, like I said, you use some sort of transitional element. It could be drums. It could be the change in a bass line. It could be this piano part. So I'm going to rewind it one more time because they initiated showing you the piano in that mode that I looked at before, but now they're bringing it back. Notice how you don't hear piano all over the song. They're using it in only tasteful small sections. So listen to this rundown that leads us into the last chorus. Okay, this, what I'm going to say here is very important. Most people have probably never noticed this. A lot of times when you're doing a big commercial song like this, when you go into the last chorus, you want to have a vocal that takes it into the last chorus. If anyone wants to go and listen to like Taylor Swift songs, Pink songs, a lot of stuff that Max Martin has done, a lead vocal will then only only do this big like yeah at the very end to signify we're at the end of this climactic moment of this song especially it happens in pop music so notice when we go to that ding 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 ding, ding, ding you're gonna hear a yeah from the lead vocalist Cool. Great. That's a, I mean, I see why people talked about this. This cube is cool. What's this all about? You know, I'm new to all of this when it comes to um, the world that SM Entertainment and K-pop is created, but I feel like there's a lot of subliminal... Um, pieces that they underline their videos with, like this cube seems like it has to do with something, the slit from the Don't Fight the Feeling, um, the things in Espa's video. So uh, this makes me curious to kind of dig in a little bit more to see what's actually happening because it feels like there's stories unfolding. But overall, I can see why people ask me to, to watch this one. Uh, this is a very intricate, well-produced song. So, uh, you know, congrats to the people who created this because obviously they you can tell they put work into this. This is very fine-tuned, meaning... There's not one element that's out of place. There's not one element that is, you know, too much. There's not one element that is off tune or that the structure is off. It just feels like a very solid, solid, I want to say like eargasmic for anyone out there, meaning all the parts click to create almost like an audiogasm where you're, you're in a sugar rush the whole time. 
And I feel like they deliver that really, really well. So thanks a lot to the people who asked me to review this song. I see why. I appreciate you reaching out to me. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more of them. I'll be doing more song breakdowns. I'll be doing demo critiques and other kinds of advice if you have questions, anyone who wants to become a songwriter producer. Also, you can pick up my own hit song checklist from my website where you can see all the secrets that I use in hit songs. So that way, if you're at home and you're looking to actually break into the music industry, you can use my checklist and it'll help you massively change the way you're writing music. That being said, everyone, I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.